Hello, game development is a journey full of mistakes, but making those mistakes is what allows us to learn and improve. Now, I've been developing in the Godot engine for six years now, and I've made so many mistakes that have really hurt my journey. So today, I want to tell you those mistakes, how to avoid them, the consequences of making them, and just overall tips to improve your experience with game dev. This video is jam-packed with information, so subscribe to help other aspiring game developers, and let's begin. Okay, so of course, organization, planning, and feedback are so important, but I want to keep those out of today's video because I'm sure you hear those all the time. So starting it off with the first mistake that's very common is doing it for others. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, people all the time, including myself, say be sure to focus on the target audience. And while this is a true statement, I don't really like it. Yes, I understand how it can be important if you're trying to sell or market the game, but even to this day, I don't think like that. Instead, I think of what would I personally like in this game? And I work to create a game that I personally would love to play. I guess what I'm trying to say is do it for you, not for others. If you truly enjoy the game yourself, then I'm sure so many others will too. And of course, this doesn't mean to ignore ideas or feedback from others, because I think feedback is the most important thing to improve as a game developer. But take what others say and think about if you really love their idea for your game, and if the answer is no, then don't work on implementing something that you personally don't like or personally don't think will fit very well with your vision. I hope that makes a bit of sense. Another mistake I've learned that I used to make all the time is trying to be a perfectionist. I wanted to make everything perfect. From the scripts, level layout, art, whatever it may have been, I wanted it to be perfect. But I've since learned that you'll never finish anything that way. You'll also drive yourself into burnout and you'll basically turn game dev from a hobby to a chore. So to avoid this, I really recommend you just create it. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to work. Then in the future, you can always come back to that aspect and fix it up. Do you remember the saying, it's better to be consistently good than occasionally great? And this is very very true in game development, so especially in the early stages, do not try and make things perfect. If anything, that is what the polishing stages of development are for. Kind of rooting from the last mistake, make sure you take your time. That's what game development is for. It's a hobby, we're supposed to enjoy it. I don't even like the idea of creating deadlines because I feel like they kind of take the hobby out of game dev. I love to sit down and develop and just not care about the time frame for the project because that's what makes game dev fun for me. If you create all these deadlines or time frames, then you'll wear yourself out quickly. So I guess what I'm trying to say is just don't rush. Enjoy the process, learn and have fun, take breaks and develop when you want to develop. It'll lead to a much more enjoyable game development journey and you'll probably even create a much better project as well. Okay, so next, learning to be consistent is very important, but not consistent as in developing every day because I actually think that is a horrible idea, but being consistent with your style. What do I mean by style? Well, for example, 2D or 3D, platformer or MMO, and so on. When you first get started, it is important to hyper-focus on a particular style that you like. Learn everything you can about that style, study it within other games, and practice creating projects only in that style. Just try and focus, learn, and master that style. Because in the process, you will be learning so much about game development as a whole, which will allow you to understand other styles, making learning every other style of game development much easier but I recommend only adventuring out when you are feeling comfortable and completely understand your current style. So in simple terms, pick a style and perfect it. Kind of staying on the same page as styles, another huge mistake I've made throughout my journey is not focusing on my art style. But I just didn't care about it. I loved to develop the project, but I just wasn't good at creating art. And even to this day, it is still holding me back. For example, I'm working on a project right now, which I'm looking forward to sharing with y'all very, very soon, but the only thing holding me back is the art. So I've stopped developing my personal project and decided to fully focus on improving my pixel art for a few weeks. And with classes and learning paths on Skillshare, I've had a great time doing so. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, but since I have personally learned so much about pixel art through the community, I thought I'd share it with y'all. If you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts across game dev, marketing, programming, design, art, audio, productivity, and more. With more meaning really anything you could possibly imagine, from writing to drumming or maybe you want to become a photographer. Skillshare is the best overall learning community I have ever been a part of. I'm currently taking the Master Pixel Art and A Sprite class by Incomass. In the future, I'm looking to take Pixel Perfection class by Mostafa to farther improve my Pixel Art and maybe even a Blender class just to dabble in the 3D space a bit. Also, Skillshare's learning paths are perfect. Learning paths are an organized consecutive class collection to master a specific skill. It is exactly what I'm doing for video editing, but whatever that skill may be, I'm more than positive a talented expert has created a class covering it. The best part about all of this is that the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive one month free trial of Skillshare. So join Skillshare and get started today and I know you won't regret it. Another mistake you really should avoid when starting game development is overscoping, but I'm pretty sure every developer has made it at some point in their game dev journey, including me, because you really want to create such an amazing game that will blow everyone's mind, but the game is just really, really complex, and there's no way you'll ever be able to finish it. I remember when I first started, I wanted to create my own bigger and better Stardew Valley, and since this was my first ever game, I think I got as far as basic player movement and some sort of tile map. 
Now, I've come a long way since then, but that's because I stuck to creating and trying to finish smaller projects. So my advice to you is to focus on very simple personal projects. Then once you get the hang of that, move into something like game jams, where you're still working on smaller projects, but you're getting to create a complete game and receive feedback from others through the jam along with building inspirations from others who created games based on the same idea that you did. We covered so much in this video, but I want to dedicate this last tip to a sentence. Yes, a sentence that you should always keep in mind, and it goes like this. Stay focused, stay organized, always seek to learn and improve, and you do that by seeking feedback from others. The game dev journey is a fun one, so be patient and don't make game dev into a chore. Keep it as a hobby, and you do that by having fun and not stressing about the things that in the grand scheme of things don't really matter much. Good luck in your journey, and if you want to join a family of developers on Discord, I'll leave my favorite server linked below, the Game Developer's Paradise. Until next time, God bless you all, stay safe, and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.